But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows, for the joy he bestows, are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. But to trust and obey. You may be seated. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Curtis. Take care and be careful there. Uh, thank God for all of you being here today. My name is Pastor Leo. Welcome to Bear Creek United Methodist Church. This is a safe, inclusive faith community that's seeking and growing in Christ's love. So glad that you are worshiping with us today on this second Sunday of Lent. I want you to know that we love you, we care about you, and we love showing the love of God to everyone uh, by nurturing our spiritual growth, not only ours, but helping you as well. Uh, please register your attendance. Let us know that you are here as well as if you need help or want to reach out, you can always ask for prayer by emailing us. Stay connected at bearcreekumc.org or you can text us, 832-773-4901. Just good to have everybody here uh, worshiping the Lord today. Uh, God has been so, so very uh, good to all of us. I uh, want to say that we are excited about this Lenten season and all that God has in store for us. We have a special uh, retreat that the prayer team is uh, offering. I'll be leading that. It's a silent retreat on March the 9th. If you'd like to be a part of that, please join us. They are taking registration uh, today. As well as I love the Lenten study that everyone, uh, if you get a chance, uh, Pastor Christy uh, Garner. Have you guys been enjoying her? I appreciate her so very much for stepping in for me. Um, on these uh, two Sundays that I've needed her. And so she's leading that, um, that teaching uh, for us, as well as a lot of things that we are looking forward to during Holy Week and, of course, uh, uh, one service on Palm Sunday and then Easter Sunday. Looking, good, uh, looking forward to God doing some great things in our lives. Amen? If you don't mind, will you stand, please, look around who you haven't seen. I haven't seen you in a while, so it's so good to see everybody here today. Why don't you show some love today?
Amen. As you make your way back to your pew, please uh, think about all those things you're grateful for as you make your way back. Look how good God is for, to have all of us together as we proclaim what we believe with our Apostles' Creed, and Sarah's going to lead us in that as well. Sarah? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's prayer time at Bear Creek. Please be seated. Let us remember to corporately pray for all those listed in the prayer pages. And now hear the prayers of the people. Though people may turn their backs on us, you do not hide your face from us. Though others may try to take away our hope, you assure us of that future waiting for us. You speak your name, creator, and it is enough. When we try to dictate our fears to you, you invite us to follow you into self-denial and service. As we struggle to shape our lifestyle to yours, you carry us with you wherever we go. You speak your good news, teacher of open hearts, and it is enough. Though we have done nothing to earn them, you pour out the gifts of grace and mercy upon us. When we stumble over our lack of trust, you set us back on our feet to follow you into the kingdom. You speak your peace, breath of holiness, and it is enough. God in community, holy in one, it is enough that you hear us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And may you join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so very much, Sure. Uh, let's keep in uh, our prayers, all of those uh, that are definitely still dealing uh, with bereavement. Uh, Lisa and Robert, uh, Lisa's mother passed. Uh, uh, 97 good years, though. 97 good years. I want to keep you in prayer. Also, um, of course, Lupe and I want to uh, say just thank you to all of you guys for all the prayers, all the cards, all the texts, all of the emails, everything. Um, it just, you have helped us so much. I, I want to say, too, you had awesome representation at my mom's funeral. Uh, the Zig Ziglers were there, Dave and Melinda, uh, really represented the church well. Uh, it's, um, uh, Debbie had a, a resolution that was read that represented the entire church as well. But whenever I looked out and I saw the Zigglers, I saw all of you. I saw all of you there. That was, that was just huge. So just want to, again, can't thank you enough for your prayers and all that uh, God does through our church family here. As we prepare for giving on today... I, I want to say that you are continually just being as generous as generous could be. I love what you're doing, and I love how it's affecting the church as well. We're able to do as you continue to give. We're able to do and make a difference in our community to 
what we're doing here. I mean, I am so amazed uh, by you and just uh, excited about what I believe that God is going to continue to do through us here at Bear Creek. Let's pray for God to bless the gifts that we're about to give, that they'll be multiplied, and that God will continue to use us. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you so very much. What an awesome God you are. Just to pour down blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon us who feel how in the world do we deserve it. But because of your grace, because of your grace, we are who we are and we can say thank you. And we can have grateful hearts so that we can give back to you. Thank you for holding us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for allowing us to praise you and give you glory and honor. Give these gifts that we give cheerfully, that we give not grudgingly, that we give because we love you. Take it and multiply it so that others may be blessed as well, we pray. In your son Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Remember, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, so smile as you give today. Thank you, sweetie.
When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk with me and be trustworthy. I will make a covenant between us, and I will give you many, many descendants. Abram fell on the ancestor. Oh. Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, But me, my covenant is with you. You will be the ancestor of many nations, and because I have made you the ancestor of many nations, your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham. I will make you very fertile. I will produce nations from you, and kings will come from you. I will set my covenant with you and your descendants after you in every generation as an enduring covenant. I will be your God and your descendants' God after you. God said to Abraham, As for you, as you for your wife Sarai, I will no longer call her Sarai. Her name will now be Sarah. I will bless her and give her you a son from her. I will bless her so that she will become nations and kings of people will come from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you to the choir. Love that. Brought me back to my radio days. I used to announce that one with Sandy Patty. She sung that. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Janet. Appreciate you for signing for us as well. Let's take a look at Abraham's statement. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, Sarah read it, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. El Shaddai, the Hebrew word that means most powerful. That's the first part. In the second part, of that verse, God says to Abraham, walk with me and be trustworthy. Walk with me and be trustworthy. God is instructing Abraham to live a life in obedience with God's commands, maintaining a pure heart in all of his actions. Different versions of the Bible give us this statement in various ways. One says, walk in my presence and be pure-hearted. Another says, I like this, walk habitually before me with integrity, knowing that you are always in my presence. And be blameless, listen to that, be blameless and complete in obedience to me. A third says, obey me and live the right, right way. And then this one gets it a little simpler. In all your life, obey me and do nothing wrong. <laughs> well, that left me out right there. Five, it says, live in constant awareness that I'm always with you and be blameless. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Walk before me and be thou perfect. The emphasis is on living a righteous life, a blameless life before God. In the oldest book in the Bible, I love how Job said it. Job states, the question is, how can more, mere mortals get right with God? How can we? So today's sermon is entitled, Fully Persuaded. Fully Persuaded. Can you say that with me? Say, Fully Persuaded. Yeah. To be fully persuaded means to be completely convinced or certain about something. Often after careful consideration, examination of the evidence, to be fully persuaded, it's a strong belief, a strong confidence that we have in something. And so as we ponder the question of Job and the life of Abraham, I believe we find Job's answer in these two words, fully persuaded. 
In this passage of Scripture, Abraham is 99 years old. 99 years old, and, and earlier in, in chapter 12, God had come to him, and Abraham was 75 years at the time. He is requested by God to leave his homeland, leave all of his family, and trust God to lead him to a land that he does not know of. And Abraham believed God, the scripture says, that God would make him a great nation, that God would make his name great, that God would bless him, and that God would make him a blessing. And then that God would allow him to be a blessing to all people. And now 24 years later in our passage, God promises Abraham, I will make a covenant between us and I will give you many, many descendants. Despite the uncertainty and the risk involved in not to mention that both he and Sarah were way past childbearing ages, Abraham trusted God and he believed all of God's promises but how how can Abraham do this second part how can Abraham keep all of God's commandments well together I want us to explore how we can get right with God in Genesis chapter 15, it says that Abraham believed the Lord and that the Lord credited it to him as righteousness. I want you to get this. Abraham believed, and all at once, all those things that God told him to do, it was as if he was doing that. Paul wrote it like this in the Romans. Abraham did not waver in unbelief regarding the promise of God, but he was strengthened. He was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, listen, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what God had promised. This is why. This is why in, in chapter 4, verse 23, Paul writes, it was credited to him. This righteousness was credited to him, and, and it wasn't just written for Abraham, okay? Are you ready? It was not just written for Abraham alone, but also for us. Why did we need to know this? Because we needed to know that God will credit righteousness to us. For us who believe in God who raised Jesus from the dead. Now, this is exciting, and I hope you can get this. The, the, the Hebrew word that is used here for credit is hashev. It's the primary idea is about computing, accounting, uh, reckoning. And then Paul uses this same word in, in Greek, though. In Greek, he uses the word for credit or impute it, which means to take on or pass on. Logic, logis am I, logia am I, logis am I. I didn't take Greek. But it means the same thing. It means reckoning, it means computing, but I like this part. It means to pass on, to pass on. Imagine someone has a debt, has a debt, and they pass it on to you. You know what that's like. <laughs> So notice this. This is to pass on something. It is where Mark uses it. In Mark chapter 15, the same way, he uses that same Greek word to describe Jesus being charged with humanity's sins. Jesus takes our debt, our sins, and we just pass it on to him. Notice this is a verb. It's a, a dependent verb. It is described as passive in form, but active in, in function. It's real, it's taking place, but it doesn't take much for it to happen. It's just passed on. Paul explains it to the Corinthian church in his second letter, in the fifth chapter, verse 21, and I love this. He said, God made him, Jesus, who had no sin, 
to become sin, to be sin for us, so that he might, get this, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Look, look at how this is working. We pass our sin on to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, through God, God passes that righteousness of Jesus on to us. <laughs> Seem pretty simple, except this. The question must be asked, are you fully persuaded? Are you fully persuaded that God has the power to make you the righteousness of God in Christ? Or if not fully persuaded, are you unpersuaded? Do you not believe it? Are you slightly persuaded? Some evidence, maybe. Are you partially persuaded? Somebody told you, maybe. Are you moderately persuaded? You know, we do have some moderately persuaded Christians. Are y'all with me? You got to turn me down some, I'm getting loud. Tell them to put that whatever on there. I get a little excited. Are you largely persuaded? Or are you like King Agrippa, almost persuaded? Let me say this to you. The righteousness that God imputed upon you, that gave to you, he didn't do it almost. He didn't do it partially. He didn't do it slightly. The righteousness that God has given you is fully. You are fully forgiven. Romans chapter 6, chapter 4, verse 6, Paul writes, David said this in, in the psalm, and I love this. David speaks of the blessedness of one in which God accredits the righteousness apart from works. This is not about you being good enough. This is not about you and I doing enough. You can't get this righteousness by what you do. And so David said this in Psalm 32. He says, when God has forgiven someone's sins, they are truly happy. They, have, they may have turned against God, but when God forgives them, they are happy. They may have done something bad, but when the Lord says not guilty, he has truly blessed them. They are happy because they no longer try, get this, to hide their sins. That feels good. The John Kurtz, I don't know if you know them, they... Um, They've been members here a while. They go to the contemporary service. They have a little granddaughter named Iris. She, she gave me this book. It's called uh, Kids Talk About God. Gave me this whenever I took my sabbatical, the fall of uh, 22. And in it, there's a question that a seven-year-old, they, they, they're asked this question. If you are a Christian and you sin, can you go to heaven? Anybody has asked themselves that question? Uh, this is, these, are, these are kids now. This is a seven-year-old. Josh, he's seven. He says, yes, you can go to heaven if you sin, but if you sin too much, you might not go to heaven. He said, I hope I go to heaven. <laughs> Chris is a little more mature. He's nine. Oh, that's she. She's nine. She says, if you ask for forgiveness, yes. If you don't ask for forgiveness, no. <laughs> Just. And then you got Austin. Austin is nine. He says, if you're a Christian, 
you will go to heaven. God is in your heart, and he won't leave. How persuaded are you? Are you fully persuaded that God has the power that God has promised? That God has forgiven you of all your sins and declares you not guilty? Stop trying to hide your sins during this Lenten season. I want you to be open with God. It's not like God doesn't know, right? But why don't you say it to God? Admit it to yourself and don't hide. Be honest, open and honest this Lenten season. God is saying today, walk with me. Trust me. How persuaded are you? How persuaded are you? What would it take to persuade you? To be fully persuaded that God is the one that raised Jesus from the dead. Romans chapter 4 verse 21 again said Abraham was fully persuaded. Fully persuaded and that God counted it as righteousness. Remember what he said to Abraham? I'm El Shaddai. I'm almighty. I'm all powerful. And being fully persuaded, God declared Abraham righteous. Righteous, as Eugene Peterson writes it in the Message Bible, God declared him, get this, set right with God. Are you set right with God? Are you fully persuaded that you are set right with God? That's why I want you. Because God has declared through Jesus Christ. Job said, so nobody can show God that he or she is completely good. I agree. We can't show it. So what can we do? None of us can do that. And thank God, we don't have to. We don't have to. And so we're faced with the question Job asked. In the oldest book in the Bible... How can anyone be right, righteous, vindicated in the presence of God? And we find our answer in Romans, fully persuaded. It is in being fully persuaded that Jesus Christ, as he says in verse 25 of Romans 4, Paul writes that Jesus Christ was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification God has done this for for you for me God has declared us the righteousness of God in Christ are you persuaded may you walk with God during this Lenten season and in your conversations with God May you open, be open and honest about your sin so that you can also receive forgiveness of your sins and the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we want to say thank you. We need help in being fully persuaded. Some of us have done things and feel like there's no way, there's no way you can forgive us of that. Some of us have been told things like these kids growing up. And we need to have a conversation with you for ourselves. Help us to walk with you, to be vulnerable with you, to be open and honest with you so that we can receive the confidence that we need that we are forgiven and that you love us. Take us by the hand and walk with us as we walk with you and draw us closer, closer to you, closer to one another 
so that the love of God that you have for us, the love that we need to receive, that we can receive that love and then give that love. And may that be evidence so that we may become fully persuaded. We praise you and we thank you. If you are here today and you need just a little more, a little more persuading, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, come on, say it like you mean it. Say, Lord, persuade me. Fully persuade me. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you don't have that relationship with God or you want it just closer, please text me, 832. Take a picture of it. Put it in there. I don't have my camera. I was about to take it with the picture. With the book. Take a picture of it. Take that number down. And let's walk with God during this Lenten season so that it will transform us. Amen. Will you please stand? I want us to sing together, think about what God is doing in your life and how God is drawing you. Our hymn of invitation today is hymn 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow Blessings are mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Amen. Thank you, Zach. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. What is God saying to you? Can you hear God speaking? God wants each and every one of us to be fully persuaded. Fully persuaded in every area of our lives of the promises of God. Listen, 
and allow God to minister to you. Think about all of the songs. Think about the preach word. Think about the prayers. And just let's meditate. Listen and be present for God as we enjoy this postlude by Martha. Please stand. Thank you, Marla. Beautiful. The question is, uh, what's one step that can move you closer to being fully persuaded? If you're not there yet. Or what's one step that will keep you there? If you took a baby step this week to move you to being fully persuaded, what would it be? What would it be? Take time to think about that this week. I look forward to seeing you next week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Prayer partners are here to pray with you. I
I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Have a wonderful week.